Hey everybody, Nick here, and welcome to the third semi-final round in my contest to try and find the very best budget EDC knife. So, uh, we've already looked at your more utility blades, and we've looked at the more tactical blades. The uh, Tough Light from Cold Steel won the first round, the Cryo won the second round, now we gotta see the other side. And so today we're gonna look at four very classic sorts of traditional blades from around the world. On one side we've got the Buck 110 and the Victorinox Classic, and then on the other side, you've got your Higo Nokami and your OpenL0008. And uh, those will eventually yield one finalist who will go to the final four. And God knows I'm excited for that. So let's go ahead and jump right on in to find the very best pocket knife in this category. So okay, as before, we're going to compare these two, find the winner, compare these two, find the winner, and then compare the winners and we'll have our finalist. So we'll start off over here with your Buck 110 and your Victorinox Classic. Um, these knives are in many ways very much opposite. I mean, you got 30 bucks here, you got 14 bucks here. You've got a huge and heavy knife and you've got a very lightweight knife. I mean, literally this knife weighs 10 times what this one does. Talking 7.5 ounces and 0.75 ounces. Huge difference there. This blade locks, it actually has a back lock to it. And this blade, is just barely a blade. It's a little tiny friction folder. And so it's a little weird to put these two up against each other, but hey, you know, why not? Uh, and, you know, the choice again is fairly straightforward because the buck is big and it's silly and it's impractical, but at the same time, the Victorinox is also impractical because the blade is just so damn small. And if we're looking for a very best EDC knife, this isn't that. And so I would much rather choose silly and impractical because it's hard to carry over completely boring and impractical because it's just not enough knife. And so the winner here, because the Victorinox isn't really a great EDC knife, is going to be a buck 110. On the other side, we got two classics from other cultures. You've got your Higo Nakami here, which is a classically designed Japanese knife, and you've got your Open L, which is just a classic French knife. And um, these are two traditional friction kind of folder things. Um, so the Higo has a great steel and a very simple design. All it really is is a blade and a folded thing. Um, the Open L is a French classic and it's got great steel and a very simple design. It's got a hinge and then a little collar that you turn. That's it. Um, but the choice here is absolutely clear to me. Clear as day. This won't shock anybody who's seen these reviews. Because the Higo is definitely smaller and lighter in the pocket. But the thing is, the Open L has a locking blade, which is a beautiful thing. Um, it also locks shut, which is another beautiful thing. If you put this in your pocket, it's not going to come flying open, unlike certain Higo Nakamis in the room here. Um, the Open L is actually surprisingly well built. Is it perfect? No, but it's pretty well done. As opposed to the Ahigo here, which is just really poorly made overall, um, and just really janky. Um, and if you've watched my Open L review, you know that the Open L has serious value as a tactical weapon system. Okay, that's more of a joke than anything, but watch that review. You might be entertained. Um, and, you know, the Higo is just not a really incredible knife for any use. I'm just not a big fan of using it. And so the choice here is 100,000% clear. The winner of this round is going to be your Open L. So who's going on to the finals? Well, okay, you got a bit of a cost difference here. You got 30 bucks versus 12 bucks. And we're back to two two-handed traditional locking knives. And they're both pretty compelling in their own ways. Neither of them is particularly great to carry. This guy is really big and really heavy with some fit and finish issues. And this guy is just really thick in the pocket. If you drop this in your pocket, you're going to feel it because it's just big. Um, and it's really beefy. The buck is 100% beefier and stronger. Um, if I need to do anything approximating hard use, although this probably isn't what I'd choose either, I would go with the buck 1,000%. The back lock here is strong, the blade is thick, there's no concern. But the Open L is a really, really great slicer, and it's just incredible for food preparation. In that way, it's just spectacular. Um, but the thing is, I just can't think of a reason beyond I want to carry a buck 110, that you would carry a buck 110. This is a knife that's really interesting and really cool, and I can see somebody carrying it because it says something interesting about who they are as a person. 
but it's just not really compelling for carry, given how heavy it is, the fact that there's no clip, and you really need to use a belt pouch if you want to carry it effectively. As opposed to the Open L, which is actually a fairly practical knife. You can throw this in your pocket, and it's lightweight enough that you don't really care, and if you've got, you know, big pockets, the bulk isn't going to bother you too much either. And so, for EDC, you got two compelling knives here, but really... The only one that I would carry on a regular basis is going to be your Open L. I like the 110, but for EDC purposes, the Open L is our clear winner and is our next finalist that's moving on to your final four. Next time, we're going to go through and find the very, very last of our finalists, and then we're into the final four. Oh boy, here it comes.